pleased to invite again to the stage Dr. Jörg Hoffmann and well-known iGaming entrepreneur Mark Dickmann, who will both look to the future of regulated iGaming in Germany after being present at the event here today. So, as always during events like this, we heard a lot about regulation that is less than optimal, about all ways in which the rules and regulations can be better. But the question is, what can we as an industry do in the meantime to make Germany's market regulation a success? Let's hear it from the local experts, Jörg and Mark. The stage is yours for the next uh, little while. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Willem. Well, there was a lot of stuff we heard yesterday and today. And I would say the panels, they identified the issues and challenges of the presence, which we hopefully get the solutions in the future and hopefully in the near future. I do not want to summarize this again. We did it before, we've done it before, and you've seen that. But what is the future, or when, when will the future start? Definitely not tomorrow, but to me, the future is named 2023, because then a lot of things will be changing. We will have that single top regulator being responsible for everything. We will have no longer the gambling committee, meaning that this regulator can make decisions, can make quick and fast decisions, and will be the only instance where we have to talk to as an industry, as a consultant, as a stakeholder at all. I think that is something that provides great expectations. And we've seen from those regulators and the representatives of the authority today that they are willing to start this discussion, to continue this discussion, and to enhance, enhance the relationship to the industry. I think this is most important. Also, we will see another environment. At the moment, we're still waiting for many licenses to be granted. In 2023, we can expect they all will be granted, if not rejected, but then they will be regranted. So there is a license market in Germany, something that is new. We don't have that now. It's still a market with three categories. Those who have pending applications, those who have got their licenses, and those who will never apply for one. Black or dark gray or whatever you call it. So we were talking about all these issues and these expectations for solutions. Mark, is there anything you think we haven't covered so far uh, which is still an issue and probably needs to be resolved shortly? Yes, um, we see this year very strongly a lot of issues in the sport betting market, the retail market. We uh, see a strong um, cleaning process in compliance and AML issues. We see Nordrhein-Westfalen, they close all no licensed shops uh, very quick. The, in, inside one week, all shops were closed. We see issues in Bremen. And these topics uh, is a, a thing, a future process that we see what happen in the next years. That every company issued a license have to be 100% fully compliant to the regulations. Um, we see also um, Germany is a cash market. We have uh, a lot of people earned cash during the day and go in the evenings in sport betting shops, in street market casinos or in land-based casinos and put the cash money uh, and spend there for uh, a little entertainment. And we see also in future um, the transfer cash money to e-wallets. Uh, and this is also a process um, what we have to work on, is find solutions, work very strongly with the regulator together, find a nice corridor that operators find their business. We, we see the requirements today. We talked this two days about the requirements, very low, five minutes, spins, and so on. Yes, that's true. What I, I learned when you talk with the re regulators, for a long time, not from the daily business, for a long time, step by step, they will learn, they will listen, and we find new solutions that all licensed operators who are compliant um, will get a nice market here in Germany. Mark, you're sitting here to close this, this conference because you are a witness of the iGaming development in Germany from the very first second those of you who attended last year will remember, Mark programmed the first online casino 
that received the license in Germany, uh, which was a life table. Uh, I think it was in 2000 something, 2002, 2003, when does it? Some years ago. <laughs> Some years ago, so almost 20, yeah, almost 20 years we ago. We started in Hamburg, yeah. uh, 2004, 2003, then we shifted this technology to Wiesbaden. This was the worldwide first regulated online casino yeah. in the regulated market. And it, running, it was running for three, four years maybe, and then? Yeah, it was good. We made 50% of the total revenue of the casino, and they so okay, this is a business, let's proceed from there. And it was very old-fashioned, just a camera and a table in yes. a, inside of the casino and a Hessian license granted by the Hessian regulator. And the whole thing stopped with the interstate treaty that came into force in 2008 and it provided a total interdiction for online gaming and so the, you needed to stop. Yeah, the, we had to stop, but interesting, uh, Mr. Bouffier, the... In, uh, Minister of the Interior these days, no. Yes, uh, ask us, please go to... Uh, a legal enforcement to this because you are allowed to do this. Yeah. But my shareholder said, no, we are not going to force our... It wasn't politically correct. To politically correct and therefore that was a very tight uh, chance uh, to, to proceed with online gaming in these days. But since then it's 20 years later, so as someone who comes from the technical side, programming, knowing the, the technology of this industry, so what's next or is there any game-changing new product development uh, it must not only be product in terms of games or software, it could also be regarding payment, regarding social responsibility. Do you see something coming yeah, up? Yeah, a lot of things coming up. Also, the regulators should be go to the international shows to listen, to talk with people, talk with technology providers. We see strong movements in the cryptocurrency casinos, even in Germany there. Companies coming up with Curacao license or license somewhere, I don't know. And there's a big market still there, and it will be there. I think, hopefully not, we work on this. But it's still there that the money is going on the strong way to these uh, operators. Uh, a lot of uh, new features will come up in future. New game providers working on this. Um, social features coming up that the people can work play together um, in future. Um, a lot of things will we, we will see uh, in the near future, hopefully also in Germany, but with, this will be take a little, little more time. I think the 2023 will be the first year with the GGL that they learn to listen, that they work with their licensees together and that everybody is compliant and work uh, on this market. And uh, we see, we will see. Uh, maybe they raise the stake uh, per spin, or the limits uh, will we go up. We will discuss this with the regulator. Thanks. This is an interesting point. The social aspect. We've seen progress, development on social media, social casinos as well. Uh, and compared to real life, in a casino, in a land-based casino, there's one over the road here, Spielbank Berlin. People play together not together, apart from poker, of course, that's one table, but there are many people in the room and everybody's going to play and they can talk and they can make a break. In the digital world, basically, if I play slots, I'm sitting in front of a screen and there's nobody around. So probably there is a, a lack of social contact and I can lose control. I think that is something that could be a challenge to enhance things in the future as well. Definitely, definitely. When you talk to uh, service providers, they say, okay, the solo game is the future. Uh, that the people sit alone at home and w uh, play on this. But go to the casinos. The people go with friends and sit together. And also the machines are programmed like when the jackpot is coming, they make a sound because the people look to this. Or they say, stay there with friends on the roller table or blackjack. Yeah? They have fun, they have entertainment. And this we have to transfer also in the online world. Uh, there's some, some, something coming up in the near future and I see something there, and, uh, but it will take time in Germany. We have to make in Germany the first steps to the regulation to be compliant. AML is a, is a big topic. Money transfer from cash to online, omnichannel products with marketing. This will be the big issues for operators in the near future, and I think the two, three years. Thank you. Just turning back our view into the future, we've discussed the Section 22C Interstate Treaty Licenses, the online casino licenses. 
some years ago, an online casino was an online casino We're offering everything, but in now, per definition, online casino is only table games, live games, the bank holder games, of course, and that's not, as you heard, subject to the virtual slot machine license. So this will be granted on a state-by-state -state basis, and uh, the majority will be offered or conducted by way of monopolies in Germany. Uh, the only states that have conducted these tenders are Schleswig-Holstein and North Rhine-Westphalia. I've heard that North Rhine-Westphalia will only publish the tender conditions somehow spring, summer next year, so I guess we will have some time, need to check this. But as far as I know, the other states, they uh, intend to do this by way of monopoly, so no private tender. Interestingly, when that all started, this was initiated by the land based casino, as far as I remember, years ago, the idea to copy Belgium, the Belgian model, and say online casino license, at least for live games, should be available for land based casino operators only. And then in 2018, the European Court of Justice delivered the sporting odds case saying that's not possible. You cannot require a land-based license as a precondition for an online license that is discriminating, illegal. So Germany was in the middle of that discussion and the first drafts were drafted for the interstate treaties. So the idea left, uh, and we had this, this very, in my view, completely weird situation to say uh, we take that off the license and then uh, it can be done by the state, the state can decide every land, or it can be done by private operators. In my view, a monopoly can only be justified if the, state, if the private operator or the private competitor is not able to reach the goals of the regulation. If the law says we can do private or state, then there is no, no, regu no, no, no justification left for the monopoly. But then it was this, this thing where you can say, well, we can, we can give it to the casinos. Interestingly, in Germany now, they are going to prefer a solution of the lottery companies taking over that business. I will never understand, but we will see next year, these licenses will be granted um, one by one. And until then, the future says we have to wait, but until then, there is no license, roulette game, online possible, blackjack, uh, all these bank holder games, they're all illegal because the state did not manage to provide a license. Looking into the future, we see a licensed environment in Germany. And to conclude this panel, I would say today we are looking into the future with great expectations. Gaming in Germany, 2023, we're looking at the present because one year from now, a lot of things have changed. And we will see whether we met our expectations or not. And uh, how the regulator kept his word and how the industry kept his word. So really looking forward to seeing all of you next year and follow on with these discussions. With that, I think we can say, first of all, to Willem and his team, thank you very much for thank putting this much. conference together, that exclusive standard level, which is unique, it's benchmark. It's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. So since we are looking in the future, there was, so there may be a question here from the audience, but so please raise your hand. Did I see a hand there now? There's one question about, one more question about the future from uh, on Slido. So let's have a look at it before we wrap this up. Biggest reason for optimism, Mark, Georg? No more gambling committee. <laughs> That's, um, this is something truth. is going on, yes. Something very... I remember 10 years ago we had the same discussions and now I see more improvements also from the government. They work on this, Lugas, Opto, and uh, there's, some, uh, there's something coming up. Yeah. Okay, and I think this is improvements and we have to work close and find a corridor together with the regulations. Okay. And a footnote on my, on my comment. I wouldn't say the gambling committee in total is bad. There are fantastic regulators from several German states part of this group, but some are not. And that is the issue of causing delays and making decisions not possible as we've faced uh, in the last one, two years. And that's why I think this is a reason for optimism that the, that the authorities can make decisions, can uh, make things faster and of course be more experienced. Great. Also typical, typical German that 
we just put it a little bit down, and then we work on this, and then we go up, not from top to down, yeah, improvements from down, bottom to up. Uh, even I think since we did the first conference uh, just before the first lockdown two years ago, we've seen some um, some positive improvements. So um, thank you for joining us here in States. Thank you, thank you for joining us here in the room. We've come to the end of a full day, a full day and a half of highly informative sessions here. Before I let you go, please, I'd like to thank our strategic partners, sponsors, speakers, and not, but not, last but not least, our team who have been supporting us in the last months, especially the last few days. We could not have done this without you. Thank you very much. Thank you for support, for your trust. If you're not on the newsletters list, it's on the website gamingin.eu or also on ga uh, gaminggermany.com. Uh, I hope to see you all soon next year, same place, maybe not same location, uh, same date, definitely not, a little bit later in October, probably just uh, some more time to enjoy after the summer. Uh, but we hope to see you in person at uh, some of the other events or here again uh, in Germany. And a special thanks to the two gentlemen on my left for following the event for the last day and a half to make this last session uh, happen. Thank you very much. Thank you.